Lab. We want to give God thanks, honor, and glory for bringing us over from 2020 to 2021. Happy New Year. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Say, oh, give oh, thanks. Give Unto, unto the Lord, the Lord for he, he is good. good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he, yes, he is, is good. good. For he is worthy. Yeah. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Yes, he worthy. saints of God to worship and to celebrate. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth and good to all generations. How many people just glad again to give God praise on a Sunday morning? Glad to be in the service one more time. I said, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. You know what? He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. Oh, but I'm glad today that the Lord has again given me the privilege 
to lift up my hands, to lift up my voice, to open up my mouth and let him know how much I love him and appreciate him. Hallelujah! I said hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Well, listen, it's another day's journey, and I'm just glad again to be a part of it. Welcome to Union Tabernacle Baptist Church. Listen, if you are watching here on our Facebook Live for the very first time, we want you to go ahead and drop a note right there in the comment section. Let us know that you're here. Let us know that you're watching so that we can reach out and let you know how much we appreciate you stopping by to worship with us during this unusual time we understand that you have many choices that you could have just scrolled on past um, to use but you stopped here today to worship with us and we want to let you know that we're praying for you that God would minister to you during this one hour broadcast service let's pray together as we move further in our worship father we love you and thank you for this another opportunity to Give your name, praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for life, health, and strength, food, and shelter. We thank you for the vehicle of technology that allows us to worship together. Although in different places, we serve one God who can be everywhere at the same time. God, we thank you that although we are unable to draw near to one another, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find help in our time of need. Meet some person who is watching this broadcast at their deepest point of need and minister to them as never before. If you do it, we'll be careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. God, we're grateful for everything you've done. Hallelujah. You brought us a long way, a long way, and we can't say nothing but thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Be, be
Just go ahead and express your gratitude to God that if you can hear me, if you can see me, if you are on this broadcast, whatever you've experienced has not been fatal or final, and God has still been faithful. So in response to his faithfulness, we ought to express our gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. From the place where the sun rises to the place where it goes down, Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. There is nobody like you. In fact, in the antiquity of our elders, we will testify, can't nobody do me like you can. God, we love you and thank you for this another opportunity to look together into your word. We pray that as we open the scriptures, you'd open our understanding. Help us, O oh God, to clearly know what your word says, what your word means, but most importantly, how it applies to our lives. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and then use me for your glory and for our good is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pause and say welcome to each of you for joining our Facebook Live worship, virtual worship experience. I'm grateful that you, when given all the options that Facebook affords you, you have paused long enough to praise with us. I want to invite you to clap your hands and say amen. For this new virtual environment is becoming all too normal. But by now, your neighbors ought to know on Sunday morning they're going to hear some noise coming from your house because it's time for worship. I had intended to start our book series, Preaching Through Galatians, this week yet again. Um, our sermon series has been interrupted by the circumstances in our culture. And I wanted to make sure to breathe a word, a rhema word to this congregation today that I believe 
is necessary as we move forward throughout whatever else this year has to offer. Psalm 91, Psalm 91 in its entirety, all 16 verses, Psalm 91. Won't you stand with me and grab your Bibles? Turn to Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you no plague come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone you will tread on the lion and the adder the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot because he holds fast to me in love I will deliver him I will protect him because he knows my name when he calls to me I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Once again, in your hearing for emphasis, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of of the Almighty. As you take your seats, I want to label this message for the next few moments that we have to share on this Facebook Live experience. I want to talk about the safest place. The safest place. This has been a very interesting week hasn't it? This week has seen great highs and lows in our country. From the incredible voter turnout in the state of Georgia and the election of the first black man to represent the state of Georgia in Washington DC as a senator, from that high moment to the very low moment that we saw in Washington, D.C., as our commander-in-chief started an insurrection of violence in our nation's capital. Our commander-in-chief of the armed forces, the one who has sworn duty to protect this nation against enemies, both foreign and domestic became the greatest threat to the safety and security of the nation 
who is under his responsibility. What happened this week in our nation's capital was tragic. Where the president turned an angry mob of hate-filled extremists against his own countrymen. It was a total and complete betrayal of the trust of the people of this country. It should have caused him to be kicked out of office the same day. It was a low point, but at the same time, where black people have been unjustly treated by law enforcement and le a legal system that seems to be against them, not to mention a pandemic that is disproportionately affecting people of color. It doesn't look good for all black people right now. Listen, church, I know that it's been hard for people of color like yourself. I know that it doesn't look good for us at the moment, but in the face of failed human leadership and failed human protection and government, we should have an even greater sense of gratitude and love and trust of our God. This is why I chose to preach this passage this week. With everything that has transpired this week, we can be encouraged by what this psalm highlights and teaches. This psalm highlights and teaches us some profound truths that I want to just drop into your spirit as you make your way into the uncertain future. Here is what I stood to tell you this morning. God protects those who love him, run to him, and trust in him. I don't think you heard me, so I think I better play that back for you one more time. I said, God protects those whose love for him and trust in him lead them to run to him. Let me rewind 10 so I can play it again so you can grab your pen so you can share it with a friend. I said God protects those who love him, run to him, and trust in him. This 91st Psalm is a general psalm that's really about trust. And it's especially meaningful for those of us who are exposed to danger and or hardship. The words of the psalm are a source of comfort and security and protection in times of sore need and deep distress. As we enter this, this next season of life, as we move forward with a new leader in our country, the central message here today in Psalm 91 is certainly that God can deliver in a time of trouble. God can take care of you. God knows everything about the situation and he intends to be in control as he protects his own. Well, I'm going to walk you through these uh, 16 verses. It, it seems to be a bit uh, long, but I promise not to keep you too long. First of all, you ought to be encouraged in the safest place because in the safest place, God protects. Verse 1 begins with, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The, the secret place refers to the place of refuge that we find in the presence of God where we can share our needs, thoughts, and feelings, doubts, and anxiety. The secret place can be the closest and quietest room, a workshop, a closet. It can be the bathroom on your job. But I want to tell you, there is no better secret place to hide than in the sanctuary of the Most High God. The word dwelleth means to abide. 
It means to remain. It's about the same as the thought that is expressed in John chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me and my word abides in you, then there are certain promises that you can lay claim to. The blessings promised here in Psalm 91 are not just for all persons, but only for those who dwell or abide and live in close fellowship with Almighty God. The word doesn't know, the world doesn't know or see or even care to enjoy such communion with God. But those of us who have relationship with God to the point where we dwell close in close communion with God will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, the words imply closeness and nearness, that the closer you move and the closer you get to God, the more secure and safe you'll be. Think about it. When we abide in Christ and his word abides in us, the shadow of God is constantly over us. In order to be in the shadow of God, you got to get close to God. Why don't you go on and type that in the comments and, and, and let me know you hear me when I tell you that you got to get close to God. He is my refuge. He is my Fortress In verse 2, God alone is our place of safety and we are to trust exclusively in him. Not in the president, not in the vice president, not in the house of representatives, not in a senator or congressman, not in your alderman, your mayor or your governor, but your trust ought to only be exclusively in almighty God. Notice the two verses here. The Holy Spirit reveals four names of God in these short verses. The Most High, or El Elyon. Almighty, El Shaddai, the God who supplies. Or uh, Jehovah, the, the Lord Jehovah, the, the eternal and unchangeable God, the Elohim, the creator who is always, all the time, in control. These four titles for the true and living God. When taken together, these names stress the power and compassion of the almighty God. The, the sovereign is in control, but you got to run to him. You got to, to stay close to to him, y'all ain't with me. So let me let me see if I can't help you see this here. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to have to go outside and play, and we had a game that we played called hide and go seek. You probably played it when you were a kid as well. But but let me just tell you the rules, just in case you're listening and you didn't grow up like I did. That hide and seek, there would be at least two or three people who would put their foot in the middle, and they would say, "Any, meeny, miny, mo." Catch a tiger by his toe. If you holler, let him go. Any, meeny, miny, mo. My mama told me to pick the right one, and then whoever was on one, that person had to put their face against a tree or some other object and count backwards from 10. And when they got to one, the other people had to run and hide. And that person's responsibility was to go and to find those people who were hiding. And the only way that you could win at this game would be to make either each of those people who were hiding revealed and found or for one of those people to find their way back to home base. And you, are, you know me, I always wanted to see how I could win every time. And so it was my common practice to hide somewhere close to home base. 
If it was a tree, I would, while the person closed their eyes and counted backwards from 10, I would hide on the other, can't you see me hiding on the other side of the tree? And as soon as that person went to run and to look for me, I would tap home base that I would be safe because I was close to home come in let me tell you why you ought not to be worried that the safest place for you to be is close to the law but not only not only are we uh, safe because God protects but we are safe because God delivers Ah, I'm so glad God delivers. That there are times when when we get off track and run down and caught by our common enemy, perhaps in some type of a compromising situation, and God has to save us, to deliver us. God here in verses three through thirteen is highlighting God's deliverance. Verse three and ninety-one begins with the word surely. He shall deliver thee. Uh, and verse 4 begins with he shall cover thee. Verse 5 says, therefore, don't be afraid. These words express extreme confidence in God's ability to deliver. No matter what situation you're in, God has the ability to deliver. But, but the psalmist goes on to give examples of what this deliverance looks like. In verse 3, he says, The snare of the fowler was a device of ancient times used by a hunter to catch or to trap birds and animals. It, it, it was almost invisible. They could not see it, but they had, they had the, 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 the hunter who had placed the trap in a strategic place so that they would get caught. We are sometimes foolish like birds are and are apt and lured to the destruction of our souls by our enemy. But if we remain, listen, near to God, we can remain in the shadow of the Almighty. He will see that the deceiver does not trick you, trap you, or trip you up. I wish I had somebody. Verse 3 also speaks about pestilence. That is a deadly epidemic a plague perhaps one that is raging through our nation through our world even right now that God has the ability to protect you from the deadly pestilence this verse 4 uses the image of shelter under the wings of a mother bird he shall cover thee with his feathers, opinions, under his wings thou shalt trust. Listen, I want to tell you that when you are close to God, he will shelter you or hide you or protect you because you are under his wings, under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 lets us know that God, like a mother hen, will always protect his own, even if it means causing harm to himself. 91st Psalm assures us that if we abide in Christ, we will be kept safe from hidden dangers and deadly diseases. Therefore, don't be afraid. Listen, I want to tell you the reason why you ought to put your mask on, watch your distance, and wash your hands, and go ahead and live your life because God always, all the time, protects his own. Eight different descriptions for the protective ability of God are given in this first four verses. Shelter, a shadow, he is a refuge. He is a fortress. He covers us with his, with his feathers, with his wings, with his shield, and with his buckler. God has built a wall of protection around his people. They all provide cover. And all 
the possible situations that we might find ourselves in, different types of persecution, rather a shield, wings, or a shadow to cover you when you are in danger, when you are in doubt, when you are otherwise would be in fear, or when we need absolute separation from the world, such as a fortress. Uh, you, you would need to be safe. But, but, but all of these things must each be sought after we run to our God. Wednesday of this week, as the, nation, as the capital was being breached, doors and windows were smashed and the senators at the Senate chamber, they had to be cleared and the lawmakers who were charged with the responsibility of confirming the next president of the United States had to run and hide for cover. They ran first, they hid under their chairs, but as these insurrectionists broke through the walls causing great harm and even the death of five different people, the, 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 the chamber had to be cleared. They had to push the people into a secret chamber where they could not be reached. This building was holding our nation's leaders and any, if anything were to happen to them, our nation could have been turned upside down. But someone who designed the Capitol building designed it in a way where if ever there was a time where the nation was under attack, those people could be taken, watch it now, to a secret place, to a hiding place. They were able to be kept safe from hurt, harm, and danger as these right wing crazy people were walking through the halls of the Capitol. They were looking for the, for the Speaker of the House. They were looking for the Vice President. They were looking for the Senators and House of Representative members, but they were unable to find them because they had gone, watch it now, into a secret place. <laughs> That they, were, they were in a secret place where they could be protected from the hurt, the harm, and the danger. Listen, I know that they were feeling some type of way because they were in, watch it now, the most secure building in the United States. The United States Capitol is the most secure place on planet Earth, and yet that place was able to be breached. They were able to destroy. They were able to distract, but they were not able to stop the will of God for the people of God in this country. God protected them because they were able to go into a secret place. But, but even better than what they had, a, a secret place in the capital, you and I have a secret place in our God where whatever comes your way, no matter what difficulty you face, no matter what sickness comes your way, I want to tell you that you can run to a secret place, a place in God. Oh, I love the thing that God is standing by waiting on someone to harm one of his children. And God, no matter how difficult the situation may be for you, God is able to protect you. God is able to deliver you. Verses 5 through 10 in Psalm 91 pictures believers as people trapped in a besieged city, but who are eventually, stay with me, delivered from the assaults of the enemy. Verse 5 talks about the terror at night and the arrow that flies by day. The thing that bothered me the most this week, I hope you don't get tired of me talking about it because it's burdening on my heart. The thing that bothered me the most this week is that most of the people in the room had their own 
personal protection person. They, they, had, they had bodyguards. They had secret service to protect them from danger. And even the secret service had to run and put them in a secret place. But this text assures those who love God, who run to God, that you will have, get it now, protection all night and all day. That's what he says. He says, it talks about the terror by night and the arrow by day. Can I apply that to you right now? I want you to know that God has 24 hour comprehensive coverage for all of his people that when you sleep at night God is up watching after you and watching over you. These verses assures us of God's protection for those who love him. Verse 5 verse 6 and 7 describe the destruction that's all around and people being killed on every side. Let me read it for you just in case you forgot. Nor the pestilence that stalks in every darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your right side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you, oh, you don't know where to shout. You ought to go on and put your phone down, baby. Because if you can hear me right now, that just says that God is doing his job. He's protecting you from danger seen and unseen. He's protecting you. He's put a shield of protection around his people. That your coverage is better than the million dollars a year that the president will get when he leaves office to protect this food. I mean, president from hurt, harm, and danger. Lord have mercy. I am encouraged today. I am confident today as I stand here even in an empty room that God is going to take care of me. He's going to take care of of you. I'm not worried about a virus. I'm not worried about prejudicial treatment. I'm not worried about any problems that this world has to offer because God promises his protection and God promises his deliverance. Biblical protection is living like you should. Listen, in order to secure it, you have to be free from sin and sinful behavior. Not that you'll be made perfect, but you ought to resist unto death striving against sin. Is this a guarantee that you'll never experience bad things? No, because bad things happen to good people all the time. Of course not. There, there are going to be some sicknesses in your body. There, there's going to be some brokenness in your mind. There's going to be some confusion, some difficult days. There are going to be times when you're going to have to stop by the cemetery. But God said you, you may have to go to the cemetery, but you won't have to go by yourself. Because he will walk with you when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Verse 8 uh, says the wicked will be cut down. But verse 10 says the righteous will be spared. Don't miss it. God cares about your character. God cares that you are righteous, that you are holding on to the truth and power of his word. Verse 13 lets us know that even wild beasts, serpents and lions and adders, they, 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 they're going to they're gonna try to harm you, but they will not be able to. They, they, they will try to attack you, but this is, this is simply metaphorical picture uh, that the psalmist is painting that no matter what danger you may face, God is able to save you. God is able to to deliver you. Some of God's people are subject to disease. But I want to tell you that if you get sick, I'm a witness that he's a healer. We've had several people to contract this horrible uh, pandemic or virus or uh, corona 
COVID-19 and and what I can stand here today and tell you that God is a deliverer. God is a healer. God can save you. God can deliver you. Come on and, and get with me today and type amen. Go on and shout at your house. If you know he's a deliverer, if you know he can heal your body, you ought to go on and testify and say he healed my body. Yes, he did. But listen, the, the, the greatest sense in which you have to be delivered, you can have confidence that he can deliver you because the greatest deliverance that you could ever need, he's already secured. That you and I are humans born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but Jesus has saved us from our sins and all we have to do is place our faith and confidence and trust in him for salvation and his deliverance will be ultimate and long lasting oh my god that, that no evil will befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling place no no plague will come nigh your dwelling place this points back to the exodus when, when God told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. We saw God deliver his people and kill the enemies of his people at the same time. When that last plague came through town, it's the, the death of the firstborn. God told Moses to, to tell the people to, to kill an innocent lamb and put the blood on over the doorpost and when the death angel came through the city that that it would pass over ah uh, that household that it would protect his people but but everyone else in town the firstborn dog firstborn cow firstborn calf the firstborn child all were killed that which killed the enemy God's people were protected ten times and the greatest was here at the last but God did not spare his only son but he delivered him up for us all that's how we should know and be confident that God has delivered us from the greatest plague and that is the plague of sin and death and hell and since you've been saved Saved, no matter what this world has to do for you, God will set you free. One of the reasons we need not fear no matter what is because his truth will be our shield. His word will protect us. God's word will protect us. One of the most interesting things I find in Psalm 91 is that this psalm was quoted by the devil when Jesus was in the wilderness after his baptism being tempted he, he used this chapter in order to try to convince Jesus to jump because this chapter this, this psalm here promises that he will protect you from having your foot hit against the stone. Now this is incredible to me that the devil knows the Bible better than some of us. That some of us don't even realize that God will protect you from hurt, harm, and danger. But I like the way Jesus responds to temptation. He responds to temptation by quoting the word of God. Now listen, no matter what you face, whenever you're tempted, whenever you are uh, tempted to go against or doubt or even to be fearful I dare you to go into your faith file and pull up the word of God when you don't have any money in your pocket you need to go to your faith file and say that says but my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory God will take care of his own another reason we have not to be fearful it's found in verses 11 and 12 for he, watch it now, will give angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands to the point where you won't even dash your foot against the stone. 
Listen, God's tender concern for you and I is so significant that it provides an angelic bodyguard to be with us all day and all night. <laughs> you know what? Let me, let me rewind 10 and play that again while you grab your pen so you can share it with a friend. I'm telling you that God's tender concern for his people uh, is it, it, secured by angelic bodyguards. Listen, the president of the United States, after he leaves office, has secret service protection, but it's only for a limited time. That after that time expires, he is responsible for his own secret service. But I want to tell you, you got better coverage than the president. That God promises that he will keep you all day and all night. I like the way that song writer put it. Angels keep watching over me all day and all night. Have I got a witness that somebody can testify? You should have been dead and gone, but God sent his angel to wrap their arms around you and to protect you. He protects his own. But listen, let me close by telling you, not only should we, uh, do we find the safest place in God because God protects. Not only do we find the safest place in God because God delivers, but thirdly and finally, we need to shout today because we can find the safest place in God because God promises. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to preach it better, better than I than I than I could if the room was full. I'm trying to preach like y'all was in here with me, shouting, amen, jumping up and down. By now, we'd be having full-blown worship. But I want to tell you, you can have worship if you just think about the promises that God offers in this text. Verse 14 of, of, of Psalm 91 begins with the words, because he has set his love upon me. And then continues by naming one promise after another. God has promised that he is going to protect those who love him. We ought to love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. The promise of safety and deliverance is made to those who have made God the object of their affection. God needs to be the center of your joy. That you should not find satisfaction in anything other than God. As much as God has done for you, as much as God loves you, you ought to make sure that your love and loyalty and lifestyle is a reflection of how you feel about God. One of the, one of the promises in verse 15 is I will be with him in trouble. Eight times in these verses, we hear the, the, the psalmist switch from third person in the first 13 verses to first person in the last three. Here, in the last three verses, we hear God talking. We, 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 can, we can bend our ear and lean in and listen to God as he makes these promises. Can, can you hear God say, I will be with you when you're in trouble. I will satisfy you with long life. God promises that, that, that he will be with you and give you long life. He will, he will, he will come when the child of God is satisfied with living. He will have no strong desire to live longer. His advanced years or his infirmities in his body will cause him to want to go and be with the Lord. I don't know how y'all feel. Sometimes y'all think I'm being morbid, but I'm really not. I look forward to the day when I close my eyes down here and open my eyes up over there. I can't wait because the Bible says to be absent from the body 
is to be present with the Lord. The Lord says, I will set him on high. I will answer him when he prays. I will be with him in trouble. I will satisfy him with long, with, with long life. I will show him my salvation. That's where I've been trying to get to. I, these promises are enough for each and every one of us to go ahead and give God praise. But the true meaning here finds its resolve in the final line of the verse, of the, of the chapter. It says, Says, I will show him my salvation. Now, the original readers of this text would have understood this to be deliverance or salvation from impending danger from their enemies around. But you and I who look back at the cross of Calvary, that Jesus Christ could secured salvation for each and every one of us. He made sure that the greatest problem that you could ever have has been solved. He kicked the back door out of death and he took the sting out of it and he has saved you. All you have to do is place your trust in him. Psalm 91 is a psalm of trust. The question is, do you trust in the Lord with all of your heart? Or do you lean on your own understanding? Do you acknowledge him in all of your ways so that he can direct your path? I like the way uh, Milton Bronson and the Thompson Community Singer says it. It says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hands and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. Karen Clark, she and her little daughter, Kiara, made a song that said, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. It may be on a mountain peak or valley low, but wherever, whatever, whatever it may be, if God says go, it's God says go. You better go, baby, and don't worry about it. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. No matter what the test, lay your hand upon his breast. God will. I said, God will take care of you. Have I got a witness? Be not dismayed. God will take care of you. He will heal your body. He will cleanse your spirit. He will kill your enemies. God will. I said, God will take care of you won't he do it I said won't he do it I said won't he do it jump up out of your seat throw your hands in there and say God will take care of you yes he will I said yes he will I said yes he will God will take care of you. Shout yes. I'm in here by myself, but I feel good right now. I say shout yes. Yes. Don't worry who's in the White House. Don't worry who's in Congress. Don't worry about a stimulus check. God will, God will, I said God will take care of you. He will because he said he will and he is never, never short of his word. He promised never to leave. Never to leave us alone. 
I've seen the lightning flash. And I've heard the thunder roll. I've even felt sin breakers dash and tried to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to still fight on. He promised. I'm trying to help you see it today. I said he promised never to leave. He promised that he would never leave us alone. In God, we have the safest place. Not the White House. Not the Capitol. Not the Pentagon. But the safest place is to be close to the will of God. Listen, if you're here and you're listening to me right now and you Perhaps, like me, watch the news, wonder what in the world is going on. All of the confusion in our land points to the fallen reality of human sin. The world is groaning. If you turn off the TV and turn off the radio and listen just a little while, you can hear it groaning. Weather, earthquakes, hurricane, all speaks to the fallen condition of humankind. But I want to tell you the greatest, the greatest reality you can arrive at is to put your trust in Jesus. Because God protects those who love him, run to him, and put their trust in him. He protects. He delivers. Oh, but I thank God that he always keeps his promise. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for its truth and for its power. We thank you for what it guarantees, what it promises. We thank you for how you secured our safety, our ultimate safety at the cross of Calvary. Now, God, I pray for our country all that is transpiring, I pray that your hand of provision and protection and guidance would be over it. I pray, God, that you will give wisdom, that you will bring justice, but most of all, that you would bring peace to this land. Secure your people is our prayer. If you do it, God, we will give you all the praise, all of the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The highest praise. Hallelujah. Come on, help me out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you today. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Yes, God. 
like to at this time give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. We just want you to know that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible lets us know that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins if we would simply just confess them to him. Why would God do this? Because he loves you so much. How much does he love you? He loves you so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for your sins. Yes, that's right. That's what John 3.16 tells us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And yes, you too can have everlasting life today. And that's what we offer you. We offer you an opportunity to make Christ your personal Lord and Savior, to accept the measure in your heart. And how do you do this? You simply do it by this. You accept, you, you admit that you are a sinner. Believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the penalty of sin, saved from the power of sin, and one day ultimately saved from the presence of sin. List in the comments below. Let us know that you've made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior or you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And someone from our hospitality ministry will get in contact with you to share with you and to welcome you into our family. Thank you so much. Time to refocus. Please join us January 4th to January 24th for our 21-day fast. 
The daily time for consecration will be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Throughout the week, we will have a daily devotional call at 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. on Saturday. Also, each member is asked to give $100 for our first fruit offering. Please join us as we give sacrifices to God leading up to our 2021 Vision Conference. Please join us for our 2021 Vision Conference, Monday, January 25th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Ministry leaders will also receive an individual email invite from Pastor Carter to schedule a meeting. Please pray for our pastor as he prepares to cast vision for 2021. Our weekly small group opportunity starts on Sunday with Sunday School. Sunday School will begin promptly at 9.15 via Zoom. The winter theme is Call the New Testament and will run through February. Also, every Tuesday we have Student Bible Study, which starts at 6 p.m. Please refer to group me for any meeting links. This has been your Impact News. God bless. Hey, what's up, UTAB? Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Listen, here at Union Tabernacle, we are endeavoring to impact the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In order to do that, we ask that our members partner with us to end giving. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Listen, if you want a running over blessing, you ought to be willing and joyful in your giving. Listen, we've given you three different options for your giving. You can give through Givelify, which is an application you can download. And in three easy taps on a secure server, you can give to our church as often as you like. Or you can go to our church website and click on the Give tab there and do so through PayPal. If you'd like to mail your gift here to Union Tabernacle, you can do so at 6623 South Stewart Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60621. Listen, just do me a favor. Smile when you give. Because God loves cheerful giver. It's giving.